Hey, Ma. Yeah, no, I, I just got back from the hospital. You mean institution? Yes. I mean, I just got back from the institution. You did the right thing. But gosh, six hours to institutionalize one girl? Could you please stop using that word? Institution? Yes. Honey, that's where you took us. I know where I took Jess, Mom. Okay, as long as we're on the same page here. It's not your fault that she's a paranoid schizophrenic with obvious violent tendencies. Take a look around. I am. This place is a fucking mess. Don't curse at your mother. If it makes you feel any better, I looked up Brightwood. What a name, huh? Nicole Richie spent a month there back in 2011. You know her father's Lionel Richie? How would that make me feel any better? That poor man. To have your daughter go through that? I can't even imagine. Speaking of daughters, your sister Jamie said you blew off dinner plans with her last week. I told her I was sure it was probably because of Jess. Mom. Think about it. All of that arguing and anger out of her? Regardless, you did the right thing today. I hope so. I hope so. You haven't made it easy on yourself. Being with her all this time. Whatever happens to that nice Jewish girl, Sarah? I don't know, I guess I, p I plan to clean up this mess. Your life or the apartment? I think I'm gonna start with the apartment. Well, you gotta start somewhere. All right, good night, Mom. How could you possibly pack so much shit for a two-day trip? Well, unlike you, I like to change my clothes. <laughs> um, someone's been busy. I forgot we even had a mop. Yeah, no shit, you thrive in a mess. I'm a dirty boy. You know you like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
How's it going, man? Hey, buddy, thanks for cleaning the bathroom. Did you use the entire bottle of bleach in there? I feel like my esophagus is eroding. Mark, are you okay, man? No, I, uh, I had to take Jess to the hospital yesterday. What? what? Is she okay? She tried to kill herself. Oh, my God. I mean, you guys know about her anxiety, her paranoia. I mean, it's always there, simmering under the surface. But this time, it was different. Just, just fucking frenetic fear. She's so desperate. It's like a cat after it's been hit by a car, its arms flailing, claws out. Trying to defend itself against this thing that's already happened. What does she, what does she do? She took a bunch of pills. I mean, I found her. I took her to the hospital where a therapist came and they committed her. Yeah, you know, the whole time that I was speeding in the hospital, it's the middle of the day. The sun was out. I, people were running errands, walking their dogs. It's a normal fucking day. I'm so sorry, Mark. What are you going to do? I spoke with the parents, and we all agree that it's a good idea for her to spend some time at their place for a while. She was always calmer there anyway. But I don't know. Her the therapist seems to think she'll be in the institution for a while. Fuck. I don't know. She, on multiple occasions, to me and her therapist, always said that's where she wanted to go. She wanted to be institutionalized if it got really bad. I just, I just hope she'd never would have to suffer that way. Your trip, guys, how was Philly? Oh, um, no, Philly, Philly was great. Yeah, we, we hung out in the city. Chris and Kayla met us at the Philly Museum of Art. They miss you, man. Yeah, those guys are great. Did you see the Scythe Wombly exhibit? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. We definitely saw the Duchamps, though. <laughs> Duchamps. Yeah, everyone's excited about the Duchamps. And they're good. It's a pretty cool museum in general. But this Saitombly is... I mean, his pieces, there's just something about how they adamantly refuse to be read against art history. I don't know, you're just... You're just required to look at them. There's no goal or destination. You know, I could probably sit in a room with those pieces for a week in utter silence, and I'd be perfectly happy. As long as you smuggled in a gallon of whiskey. <laughs> I guess you're probably right about that.
you want to go down the street and have a few beers with us? No, man. All that noise, sound, and fury. You reading Faulkner? Well, I meant Shakespeare, but no, seriously, guys. I think I'm just going to stretch out here, watch some romantic comedies. <sighs> Fuck, dude. As your friend, I feel compelled to encourage you to come drink with us instead. No, seriously, guys. I'm pretty content right here. All right, but, you know, don't be surprised if you find me prying you off that couch with a shovel. <laughs> it's a chaise. <laughs> All right, miss. You ready? I am. <laughs> Excellent. Night, Mark. Night, guys. Oh, that fucking couch. I know. Holy fucking shit. It's like we're in this movie, right? Not <laughs> not like in a glamorous way, but like we're in a banal documentary about time passing. <laughs> I feel like we're in a romantic comedy. But it's dark as fuck. <laughs> and you and I are the supporting cast. Supporting cast. Okay, so we're not the quintessential lovebirds. <laughs> Fuck no, not in this case. I mean, Lyra, the most incendiary romance happening right now is clearly between Mark and the Shades. Oh my God, the Shades. Yes, of course. All right, I'm about to be 30 next week, right? Okay, so I think that we should start looking for a place of our own. Yeah, no. Just us. No, I think, I mean, that's a fucking fantastic idea, you know? Sexual playground of sorts. Where we also make dinner and have a garden. Okay. No arguments? No arguments? But really though, our lease is up in a couple of months. If we mm -hmm. want to do that, we should start we should start looking now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Um, there is a slightly more pressing concern that we need to discuss. Mm -hmm. Your birthday. Um, what do you want to do to celebrate? Big party. Big party at our house. Okay. Okay. We can make that happen. Speaking of making things happen, I've been thinking a lot about your birthday present. And I know that you are waiting with bated breath to see what <laughs> I will bring you. And here it is. A foot rub. And, and, and a picture of me beside a monument, or like a monument to monuments. If that exists, if that exists, so you'll never forget me. Well, I guess I need to reconsider our moving plans then. I mean, obviously I want a picture of myself for my birthday. You are so vain. Oh, I'm vain. All right, cool. <laughs> <Got it. Yeah. laughs> All right for all though, I worry about Mark. Yeah. How do you think he's gonna take it? I was just dipping out. I don't know, I mean, seriously, like, I think he'll be happy for us. Um, I do, I do worry about him. You know, I feel like he's still grappling with everything that happened with Jess, obviously. Yeah, but, but Jess did fine at her parents' house, right? I mean, she's traveling now, right? Yeah. Did Bart tell you about the candy factory? No, no candy factory. Oh, What's wow. the candy factory? <laughs> wow. Um, so, Jess was traveling through Oklahoma, and she got some work at a candy factory. And her first day at the candy factory, she had a vision of an old woman, a Native American woman, who was cradling a child in her arms and weeping. And she kept asking Jess this question, like desperately asking her this question, but in a language that Jess couldn't couldn't understand. Oh, Jesus, dude. Who knows how to navigate these dark paths? Fuck. Certainly not me. But you know, like, we are little lights on each other's paths. You know, like, Lyra, when I come to you, I know that there is one thing that's true. Even though that that truth gets eclipsed, you know, like by our lives, our deaths. 
these small moments, just like, like this moment. And it's so sweet to hold you and to be held by you. It is sweet. And I love you and your little way. But I worry about Mark. I hope he can feel held. Amazing! You're gonna be the most suave man at the party tonight. Let me get a picture of this. Come on. Oh yeah, give me that sweater. Yeah, yeah, give me that gold. Come on. Yeah, give me that shakes. Give me that shake. Give me wow, that sweater. Wow, Mark, you're incredible. This looks like something you would see on a dating website. <laughs> a dating website. Exactly. Like in that commercial, where the two most boring people of all time, convince themselves that they found that ancient connection. <laughs> Love. Eros. Except in this case, our hero is a booze fuel marauder galloping into an impossibly beautiful nightmare where his true love awaits him at the other end of a gleaming computer screen. Are you guys wasted? Fuck yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah! I'm gonna join a dating website. Holy shit, that's absurd. <laughs> Buy whiskey, I am Capel. You guys are both absurd. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Hey, hey y'all. Happy birthday, Lara. Thank you. Are you ready to party? Fuck yes. Well, it looks like Eric and Lara are moving out when our lease is up. Oh, shit. What are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty broke right now. But fuck it, whatever. I'll figure something out. Well, why don't you just move in with me? You can crash on my couch while you figure everything out. Really? That would be great. Well, just remember, I don't have a lot of space, so you're going to have to be pretty spartan about it. Well, I don't have a lot of stuff. Just my art things, some books. I'm gonna really miss this place. Hey guys, what are you talking about over here? Uh, looks like I found a place to stay for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark's gonna crash on my couch while he figures everything out. Great. Well, I mean, it sounds like you'll be right at home. I guess so. and making making this art well it's tired poor hungry mostly but it's nothing like this picture when we play it's all about these moments like no one else is really there and we're the heat the momentum and like it doesn't really matter if we play letterman or you know whatever yeah, there are these moments. This, there's these moments of, of total concentration. It's like an annihilation outside of the death fear. The things that people fetishize, the art, the artist, those are just remnants of moments. 
the acquisition and consumption of art, that's, for me anyway, that's not part of the aesthetic process. When you ask me what making art's like, well, it's that. For me, that's what it is. It's all about getting back there, finding that place, that concentration, that annihilation, that, that moment of, of pure, focused, present being. Trying to just find a reprieve from all the despair of, of meaning making. Do you guys like any of them? That was, that was really deep. <laughs> You're kind of cute. Oh, you kind of cute too. Baby, are you okay? You feeling real bad? You need some water? You need a little pet on your sweet head? Your sweet birthday head? Oh. oh what's, what's wrong? Uh, I... I can't do this. Uh, uh, okay, y'all, uh, bliss party's over. Birthday girl is down for the count. I'm gonna have to uh, officially call curtains on our lovely night together. Thank you for being here. Uh, but good night, good night, sweet friends. Go off into the dark night with your flashing eyes. It's a hard road. Fun and all. Hey, little bro. Morning, sis. Did you see that email from mom last night? Oh, right. You mean the one about how true success is measured in wealth, wisdom, and proper reproductive practices? Particularly having children. Yeah. You know, her desperation for grandchildren is really only slightly less pronounced than her penchant for sending advice-ridden emails. It's like ever since she and Dad got divorced, she's been on this high horse, and she knows everything, and she's going to do whatever it takes to keep us from fucking up our lives like Dad did. I know. Tell me about it. Right. I mean, I get it. Dad is a dick. And, I mean, like, I love him and all, but fuck, we didn't marry him. We're innocent bystanders. We have the same life-destroying ammunition that anyone else has. It's not like we're wearing belts of dad grenades. <laughs> and, I mean, you've got it. You've got the good job. You've got a nice house. An okay taste in art. I mean, these are clearly shit. Mark, your self-deprecation is really doing you no favors. Self-deprecation? You know, I always consider my feminine side as a Deborah. I'm just a little Debbie. <laughs> Mark, seriously. Oh, come on, like you don't like zebra cakes? Oatmeal cream pies? Oatmeal cream pies? Mark, you're my brother. My house is your house. But what are you doing, like, with your life right now? Well. A dating website. It's all about the shakes. For some reason, that does not seem like the most pragmatic use of your time. Look, I gotta go to work. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. But I really like living by myself, and I would really like to be doing that again sometime soon. I get it. I understand. And uh, I'm just trying to figure some things out right now. And I'm sure... It's just a matter of days before I meet my sugar mama. Okay. Good luck, little Debbie. Jamie? Thanks.
much. Could you take your shoes off before you come in? My dad just bought me this loft, and I don't want you fouling it up. Oh, sure. All right. Sit right here. I'm just finishing the soup up. So, uh, how's your day been? Well, I've been slaving away in this kitchen for hours perfecting this recipe. Yeah, it smells really good. So what do you do? Well, I'm a social worker. So I basically spend my day working with methadone addicts, homeless people, domestic abuse victims, and other poor people problems. That sounds really gratifying. That's cool. Not really. If nothing else, it makes me feel better about my life. Interesting. Well, you know, I'm a writer, so I... So anyway, I have lots of time to spend online sending catch.com messages. I was shocked you responded so quickly. Were you waiting at your computer for someone to message you? Well, it is an IM. I mean, you instant messaged me. So, yes. Do you like movies? I mostly only like zombie movies. Cool, like Dario Argento? No, like Stephen King. Well, Stephen King's a writer, he's not a director. Oh, um, I bet you're one of those people who like the Criterion Collection. There's some good ones. You would. Anyway, I really like Rob Zombie films. Is that because his last name is Zombie? No, I just like his movies. Anyway, I don't have that much time to watch movies because I work hard. I don't have time to write or to watch the Criterion Collection. Soup's good. You're damn right it's good. It doesn't look like you like it, though. No, no, it's great. I just, I had a late lunch today and I happen to be a little lactose intolerant. That's not a real thing. Do you have a gluten allergy, too? Are you allergic to everything but the Criterion Collection? God, I need to smoke a bowl. So this is what you came here for, right? Why don't you come sit down? All right. I can't believe it, this is my couch. It smells a little different, but otherwise. It probably smells like my ex-boyfriend. He's been living on it the past few weeks. I took the bedroom ever since I saw its dick pic on Craigslist Casual Encounters. Honestly, the only reason I recognize it is because he was stupid enough to take it on this couch. That, in his veins. You know what? You're right. It does smell like him. Let's go to the bedroom.
What are you doing out here? Uh, nothing. I just couldn't sleep. I didn't want to wake you. Is it because I snore? No, no. Then what is it? Nothing. I just really missed my shades. I've not even written the end God says as he reaches Reaches for a pen he says Why is this the hardest part Not like the project Wasn't doomed from the start He can't recall He looks for exits And existential arms To beat away The doubts and the fray That feast on his lack Of direction and pace Just holy leopard Then destroy us still It takes a license to heal pain Doesn't matter if you're borderline insane Reaches for a pen, he says Why is this the hardest part? Not like the project Wasn't doomed from the start Reaches for a pen.